Hello everybody and welcome back. Let's talk about the problem disjoint intervals. We're given a list of intervals, each represented by the start and the end times. And the goal of this problem is to find the length of the maximal set of mutually disjoint intervals. What does this mean? Let's take an example to understand this better. Let's say that the input given to us is 1, 2, 2, 10 and 4, 6. So there are three intervals given to us and we have to find a particular permutation and combination of all of them such that we can select the mutually disjoint intervals and we can create the maximal possible set of them. The answer in this case comes out to because we're going to select the intervals 1, 2 and 4, 6 leaving out 2, 10. This is the best possible case that we can have. Now this might look a bit, bit cryptic so let's go ahead and visualize this. So this is the visualization I've created and uh, by the way these do take a lot of time to create so if you like this video be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you like the effort I'm putting it uh, let me know in the comment section down below. Anyways let's go ahead and plot out the uh, intervals which is 1, 2, 2, 10 and 4, 6. And now we're going to start off with some simulation. We're going to say okay you know what let's go ahead and select the interval 1, 2. So this is what happens when we select the interval 1, 2. And now we ask the question, hey, can we select the interval 2, 10 as well? And the answer is no in this case, because in 1, 2 and 2, 10, we can see that 2 is being repeated. So the point number 2 is going to create an intersection between these two intervals, which we do not want. Right? So what we'll say instead is that, you know what? Let's go ahead and skip over 2, 10 and let's see what will happen if we include 4, 6 instead. So if you look at both of them, these are indeed mutually disjoint intervals and we can get the final answer as 2 for this particular test case. Now we did leave out 2, 10. So let's go ahead and see what will happen in a case when we try to include 2, 10. In the case we include 2, 10, we have 1, 2 and 4, 6 both left out. And that's because in 2, 10, 1, 2 intersects in the 2 position and 4, 6 is basically embedded into 2, 10. So when we select 2, 10, we cannot select anything else. Right? So the final answers for both of them are 2 and 1. So in this particular test case, we explored two different possibilities and we got the best possible answer as 2. Now, this, what we've done here is uh, twofold. The first thing we've done by default is sort these index. We've sorted these intervals. Now, this sorting is something that we commonly do in these kind of interval questions. So that's one thing that you can keep in mind for later on as well. Now, the sorting thing is also very important for this question and we'll come back to it later. But now the second point is that we have in a way made some sort of decision, right? This question can be boiled down to a dynamic programming problem in a way because we are going to make decisions of whether we want to include 1, 2 or not, whether we want to include 2, 10 or not. Or whether we want to include 4, 6. Anytime we are making these sort of decisions and we want to look into the future, we want to look into the past and we want to figure out okay, what's going on this current point of time. Whenever we want to make decisions, we are always going to go for dynamic programming. So dynamic programming is going to give you one correct solution, is one particular approach that is going to give you a correct solution. But that might be a bit too complicated and maybe there's something else going on. And before jumping into any one approach, it's always a good idea to look at more test cases and see if there is another sneaky observation somewhere hidden. And so let's go ahead and try to find out what's going on. So I've written on another test case, which is one of the test cases mentioned in the question itself on interview bit. And the test case is 1, 4, 2, 3, 4, 6 and 8, 9. And I've plotted these out again because there are two possibilities that we'll consider. And just a quick aside, there can be test cases where there are multiple such possibilities, but I've only mentioned two of them for this test case just for the sake of convenience. All right, so let's go ahead and say that I want to select the interval 1, 4. I make a decision to include the interval 1, 4. So the answer on the right hand side will become 1 in this case. Now, can I select 2, 3? I cannot because it intersects. Can I select 4, 6? Again, no, because 1, 4 and 4, 6 intersect at 4. Can I select 8, 9? Yes, I can. So let's go ahead and include that and increase the answer count by 1. Pretty good, right? So 
as soon as we selected 1 comma 4, we sort of created a chain of events that led us to the answer 2. So 1 comma 4 in a way drove the solution and we got the answer as 2. Now what if I don't select 1 comma 4 and what if I select 2 comma 3 instead? So in the second possibility, we are going to first select 2 comma 3. Now can I include 1 comma 4? No, because it will intersect. Can I include 4 comma 6? Yes, I can because 2 comma 3 and 4 comma 6 do not have anything in common. They do not have any intersections. Now can I go ahead and select 8 comma 9 as well? Yes, I can. And so in this way, by selecting 2 comma 3, we were able to get a better answer of 3. Now, if you also notice, as I mentioned, 1 comma 4, as soon as we select the interval 1 comma 4, in the first possibility, it sort of drives the rest of the decision making. And in the second case, in the second possibility, as soon as we select 2 comma 3, it drives the rest of the decision making. Now, what is the difference between 1 comma 4 and 2 comma 3? Maybe there's something inside of these both intervals that can lead us to the solution. So maybe this interval is, uh, maybe 2 comma 3 gave us a better answer because it starts later. You know, uh, 2 is greater than 1. So this interval is smaller. This interval from 2 to 3 starts from 2 instead of 1. So maybe starting later is a good idea. Maybe it's a good heuristic to get to a solution. Or maybe it's not. Maybe it's the ending times that really matter. And because 2 comma 3 ends early, we can say that, you know what? All the intervals that are going to end early are going to give us a better answer. Now, at this point, we can't really be sure. I mean, we just got the hypotheses. Now, let's go ahead and test this out. We'll take the first example that we saw, the first, very first example that we saw, which is 1, 2, 2, 10, and 4, 6. Now, which of them is going to hold in this case? Feel free to pause and see whether starting earlier, sorry, whether starting later or ending earlier is a better heuristic to get to an answer. If you notice, 1, 2 starts earlier and 2, 10 starts later, but we do not select 2, 10. We do not select the interval which is starting later. We select the interval 1, 2 which is starting earlier, which means that the point 1 is wrong. But what about ending early? We can see that both the intervals 1, 2 and 4, 6 are going to end earlier than the larger interval of 2, 10. So it looks like the first point starting later is wrong and the second point ending earlier is correct. And feel free to pause here and ponder of like what this heuristic means. This makes a lot of sense because ending early gives us possibilities in the future to work with. If an interval ends early right now, we can say that it leaves a lot more space, a lot more time for other intervals to join in the party. But if an interval ends later on, if, it en if an interval drags on for a long time, well then it will, might block other in intervals to join the party. Which means that ending early is a very good heuristic for this question. In fact, it is the optimal heuristic. Now, we, I've already explained the intuitions, but there's a formal proof behind why ending early is going to give you the optimal solution. Now, if you're interested in the formal proof, it's mentioned on my website, links down below if you want to check it out. But anyways, we'll keep this ending early point in mind and we are going to go ahead and implement this logic. So here's what I've done. So the first thing we'll do is sort the intervals as I've already mentioned in the starting. Sorting the intervals is always a good idea. And so we'll sort the intervals and the key in this case is the lambda function where we input x, which is one particular interval, and we're going to return x of one. Basically saying that sort these intervals by their ending positions, because we want the intervals that end early to come forward first. And we want the intervals which end later to go towards the end. Pretty simple. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start with the interval a of zero. We're going to interval which started and ended the earliest. So a of zero is the interval we're going to start off with. We'll increase the count and we'll set the count to one because we're already going to select a of zero. And we'll also set the previous of s and the previous of e in mind, which is the previous of start and the previous of end. This will make sense in a second. Now what we'll do is we'll iterate over the elements inside of the array. We'll iterate over the intervals, giving us the start and the end times of each interval. And now I'm going to ask one very important question. 
I'm going to ask the question, hey, is the start of this current interval I'm looking at is before the ending of the previous interval? Let me say it again. Does the current interval start before the previous interval ends? That is, is there an overlapping? Is there an intersection between these two intervals? Because if there is an intersection, if this condition is true, then go ahead and pass. Do nothing in this case. We don't want to mess with the cases where there are intersections. We want to avoid them instead. And in the else condition, we're going to go ahead and write, you know what, go ahead and increase the count because clearly this current interval that we're looking at is not intersecting with the previous one. So which means that we can include this current one, right? So we're going to go ahead and increase the count by one. And we'll also say, you know what, go ahead and set the previous of F, previous of S and the previous of E to be S comma A. Basically, the previous intervals now become the current intervals times. All right, so this is it for the code of this solution. Now, I know this is one of those questions where the greedy solution ends up giving you the optimal solution. And the proof for that is mentioned in the written article on my website, links down below. In any case, as I mentioned before, uh, these visualizations do take a lot of time to create. So if you enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up. It lets me know that uh, you find these visualizations helpful and meaningful. And if you want more of this kind of content, well, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I'll see you very, very soon.